hi you guys welcome back today we are doing our birth story and i'm so excited so adam's here to tell the story with me because first of all it's our story together second of all i've never heard your perspective of it yet so i'm really excited for that we were trying everything we could possibly try to have a fourth of july baby because why because we wanted to free baby clausen on independence day like right and and every year and every year we'd get to celebrate his birthday with fireworks like how cool is that and the difference is a lot of people were saying like you don't want your child to have a holiday as their birthday because then it like takes away from the birthday but i was like well wait a minute if it's christmas then he gets you know anywhere around christmas he winds up getting shorted on presents yeah. you get like the two for one right birthday and christmas but fourth of july I mean, fireworks every year on your birthday, and you're gonna get presents? Like, you can't beat that. You can't. Unfortunately, it didn't work. But, however, we went out, we did everything. I'm talking bouncing on the ball, squats, red raspberry leaf tea, dates, like everything you can imagine. But I think that started labor for me because I was okay. squatting with a heavy backpack. Remember, we were doing like tons of squats that day. We did. So, if it didn't happen that day, I had an appointment on July 6th that I had booked back in May and it was something personal and I really was looking forward to this appointment. So if we couldn't free baby clothes in by the 4th of July, then I was like, just wait, please just wait for me to have this appointment. I really wanted to go to it. And let's just back up. He was due July 22nd and I had scheduled my induction because my doctor wouldn't let me go past 20 weeks, but you have to be 39 weeks in order for them to schedule you early. So he was scheduled to be induced, or I was scheduled to be induced on July 15th, right? July 15th would have been how many weeks? 39, exactly. 39 weeks. Right. And I thought he was coming on the 16th because all this time I'm like, he's coming early. And then finally when we scheduled that, I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to wait to be induced. I really didn't want that because I've heard horror stories. So anyway, July 6th, rolls around, it's Tuesday morning. I had a busy day that day. I had work in the morning and then I had this appointment I was telling you guys about at 11 o'clock. Then I had my doctor's appointment because I was at weekly appointments at that point at two o'clock. So worked in the morning, got ready, and I was kind of running around a little bit. I really wasn't paying attention to what I was eating or drinking water that day. So my appointment was on Zoom. And I remember I had my water bottle, it's a liter, and I always drink out of that because I can count four liters as a gallon. I know how much I'm drinking throughout the day. They always say third trimester, you have to stay hydrated because if you get dehydrated, you can go into premature labor, all this stuff. And during this appointment that's on a Zoom call, I had my water bottle next to me. But it was kind of like this interview situation that I don't really want to get into, but I had this water bottle that Chimpolita Prince, did I say that right? That she sent to me. And it says Mrs. Clausen on one side, on the other side it says wifey. But as I'm having this interview, I don't want this woman to know too much about my personal story. So I have it off to the side and I wasn't drinking that much water. Just, just keep that in mind. After the call, it was an hour. I had to work a little bit longer and I made myself lunch really quick. Here's another thing to keep in mind. We had baby bok choy in the freezer and I had tofu with it. If I knew I was going into labor, I never would have eaten bok choy, but that's besides the point. So right before and during this appointment, looking back now, I didn't realize, but I had to pee literally every two or three minutes. <laughs> that I even asked my sister, I was like, I, I texted her, I didn't ask her, but I said, I must be so nervous about this appointment because I'm literally stopping to go to the bathroom, which I had to do a lot towards the end of my pregnancy, all of pregnancy really, but this was that advanced. Probably now looking back, he had dropped, so he was pressing on everything, but I didn't know I had started labor at any, at all at this point. So I finished my lunch and I head out to my appointment and I was on the phone with my sister telling her about that interview that I had just had. And are you laughing that I spilled water? No. Oh, you're laughing at him. And 
as I'm walking into the doctor's office, I felt like I started to get a little bit of cramps, period cramps in my stomach. But this had been going on for weeks and I didn't think much about it. In fact, when they took me to the back to take my weight and to take my blood pressure, they were asking me, have you had any spotting? Have you had any cramping? And I specifically said to the girl, which is hysterical, I said, I'm just starting to get cramping right now, but I really didn't drink enough water today. It's probably that. Then I said to her, next breath, famous last words, maybe. So they take me into the room, and she just kind of giggled. They take me into the room where I always did every week uh, the non-stress test where they hook up a monitor here to monitor contractions and then a monitor lower to monitor baby's heart rate. And they leave me in there for about 20 minutes. The nurse comes in and she checks the paper and she looks at me and she said, are you feeling these contractions? And I said, yeah, I'm just starting to feel kind of crampy. Oh, back up too, when that girl who took my, just kind of the tech who took my blood pressure or my weight, she asked me, do you want a cervical check today? And I said, no, I mean, not really, unless they want to give me one. Like, I guess I don't have to, because I did the week before, I was 80% effaced and his head was kind of engaged at minus two, I think it was. So when the nurse came in and she said, are you feeling these contractions? She said, let's check you and see what's going on. So we get in a room and she checks me and she goes, oh, you're four centimeters dilated and you're in active labor. And I was like, ah, you're funny. Mm -hmm. She said, let me go get the doctor. And then she goes, ooh, she goes, you're having your bloody show right now. She goes to get the doctor. The doctor comes in and he says, no, I don't believe any of this is happening. He says to me, you're in labor. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. Sorry about that. We had a minor intermission. Got peed on for the second time today. CJ's with grandma eating. Grandma flew in from heaven yesterday. <laughs> She's an angel helping us. So as I was saying, the doctor came in the room and the doctor that was in the office that day saw me and he said, listen, he's like, you're in early labor. I could send you to the hospital right now, but what they'll do is they're just gonna have you walk around for a couple of hours and then check you again. So probably what you'd rather do is go home, relax, get your stuff, and when things progress, come back to the hospital. So I said to him, well, if my water breaks, do I go back to the hospital? And he was like, yeah. So I said, where do I, this is how clueless, this is how clueless I am. I was like, where do I go? Do I go to the emergency room or do I go to labor and delivery? So he was like, well, if it's after hours, go to the emergency room. But if it's before after hours, if it's during normal hours. So I came yeah. around. <laughs> then go to labor and delivery. So I said, okay, should I get dressed now? And he's like, yeah, I'm still in denial that this is happening because I'm not in any pain. So the nurse comes back in and she says, okay, do you have any questions? And I was like, yeah. I was like, this can stop, right? That's exactly what I said to her because I genuinely didn't believe it. And she was like, I mean, it can, but it could also not. Like, you're in labor, girl. And I was <laughs> like... All right, so denial, I get dressed, I leave. I'm on the way out, I'm like, do I need another appointment? The girl's like, no, you're good. I was like, okay. I go to the car and I FaceTimed Adam and I knew he was gonna be in a meeting at that point, but I figured he'd answer his phone because at this point you were keeping your phone on you all the time. So I called him and I was like, so the nurse said I'm in labor, but I don't think I am. What? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> like right now? I'm like, what are you doing in the car? The I nurse said you're in labor. Why are you in the car? I was like, no, I don't think I, like, I think it's not real. <laughs> like, I think he goes, should I come home? And I was like, mm, no, like, I don't think you have to right now. I don't feel anything. And you were like, I was like, yeah, I, I think I need to be there right now. And then I was like, well, I got, I mean, maybe, you, yeah, yeah, maybe you should. Because in my head, I'm like, well, if this does progress, he's a half an hour away. And I'm thinking, thank God, like, it's not an emergency. Yeah. She's in labor, but clearly she's not stressed. I'm trying to show that I am not, like, frantic. Like, everything in me wants to just literally drop everything I'm doing and sprint out the door. And there are people standing just outside of my office who hear me and they're like, what, what's happening? I was like, she's in labor. They're like, what? I'm like, 
Um, yeah, she's in labor, but they said it's not quite time. I was like, I don't know. I gotta go. They're like, go, just go. <laughs> so I'm like spinning around literally in circles in my office, trying to figure out like, do I pack? Like, am I coming? I'm not coming back here. Like, who knows when I'll be back here? Let me just throw everything that I need right now. Throw stuff in my bag, you know, lock, my, lock everything up. Like, I'm gone. I'm leaving. And on the way out the door, I'm like, tell, they're like, what? And the word is spreading. <laughs> it's spreading quicker than I can get out the door <laughs> to now everybody knows that we're having a baby. So it was exciting. But at the same time, like, I'm talking to myself, like, just breathe. Just breathe. You got time. Like, it's, it's not going to be 120 miles an hour across town. Like, she's good. She's headed back to the house. I'm headed to the house. I'm going to meet her there. If anything changes, she's going to call and let me know. So, and then I think you had, I called my friend Sarah cause she's a nurse and she was like, and she has two kids and she was like, you're in late. Like, what don't you understand? You're in labor. And I was like, nah, I don't, I don't think I am. Like, I think this is going to stop. I don't feel anything. Like I had watched birth videos for nine months prior to this to the point where Adam was like, I think you should stop, but I need to feel like I can control something. And I was, I've literally been petrified of labor and delivery since I found out how a baby's born. So she's like, girl, like don't play. She goes, you're in such good shape. This is going to happen fast for you. So I was like, I mean, like I, I all right, fine. So I got home. No, you called me back and you're like, can you just stay on the phone with me? Remember? Yeah. We stayed on the phone that whole time. But then when I got home, I was like, I kind of feel like I have to go to the bathroom. And Sarah's like, D seriously, don't play around because you're going to have a toilet baby. Like that's how she worded it. And then I'm like, well, maybe I should get a little serious about this because I don't want to miss my epidural. But I, I, like, I feel nothing. I felt slight, literally slight period cramps. That's it. So you got home. I don't remember. I showered. I wanted to shower just in case this was the real deal. Just in case. What, what we, I wasn't here long. No, because then I texted my sisters and they were all like, go to the hospital. And I'm like, I don't think I need to. <laughs> 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 to the point where Adam was kind of frantic. Like, I didn't even tell you this, but my sisters were like, how's Adam? I'm like, I'm literally so chill. I've never been so chill in my life. I think I'm in denial. I don't feel anything. Poor Adam is usually the chill one. And you were like <laughs> frantic. Like, do you want to go? Do you think we should go? I'm going to take out the garbage. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And so. Still spinning around in circles. Still spinning in circles. Yeah. And after the doctor, I was supposed to, if I was not in labor, which we weren't anticipating, go to the store and get dinner and also pick up the dry cleaning that was ready. So he's like, oh, I didn't get my dry cleaning. I'm like, well, let's go get it. I'm like, and then I guess we can go to the hospital. Because at this point, like my, it, it was just like, my period cramps were just a little bit more intense, but not to the point where like, I didn't feel contractions. I just felt a little bit of crampy in my stomach that I had felt for weeks before this. So at this point I'm like, okay, let's go. You were here maybe 15 minutes. If that. Yeah. Just enough time to for me to shower, get dressed again. And it literally into the clothes I was wearing. I just wanted to be like freshened up. And for you to grab all of our bags, the car seat that wasn't in the car yet. And that was it. Took out the trash. And I'm like, I guess we can go. But honestly, I was like, stop and get the dry cleaning on the way. Like they're gonna send us home from the hospital. I know that they are. So while you went into get your dry cleaning. And just to keep yeah. in mind, the dry cleaners is literally yeah. around the corner. Yeah. And the hospital is eight minutes away. Yeah. And the whole time, I'm like, just go. He didn't want to stop with the dry cleaner. And I'm like, they're going to send us home. We're going to be there for days if we're there. It's going to take forever. Just stopping at the dry cleaning. And while you were in the dry cleaner, like, my cramps maybe went from a two to like a three. So I'm like, mm, I think maybe we should go. We go to the hospital. <laughs> I don't even know if you remember this. We walked in. And there was a woman in front of us, like at the, like the check-in reception area. Is that what you would call it? And she was kind of being slow. And Adam says to me really loud for the guy to hear, like, are you okay? Are you in pain? Like, do we need to go in faster? And the guy heard and he saw my belly and he's like, are you here for labor and delivery? And Adam's like, yes. And he kind of like got us around. Still no pain. 
So we go up to check into labor and delivery, and I thought that the, I got the impression that the lady that was checking us in was like, oh, first time parents, like, no. She's like, tell the baby to wait until Saturday. That's my birthday. Like, they, she was so sweet, so, so sweet, but she didn't believe that I was in labor, nor did I. So we go to fill out the paperwork. Now I feel no pain. The period cramps disappeared. I remember whispering to Adam, I was like, they're gonna send us home because I don't feel anything at all anymore. I think it stopped. And you were like, okay. I was just grateful that we were at the hospital. At the hospital, yeah. So I, they, I finally breathe, like, uh, yeah. Like, okay, we're where we need to be. Like, let's just in case, let the yeah. professionals take it yeah. from here. So, and I have to tell you guys, I could show you the text from my sisters. I was saying to them, like, I am not being a warrior. I need an epidural. So if I'm in pain, I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm going to play it up. I am not lying to you guys. I did not feel, that's exactly how I felt. Like I felt period cramps for like an hour or two. Then they progressed from, let's say a one, like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst, a one to maybe a two. And then they were like, okay, we'll take you back and we'll check you. They took me back. My doctor, who I usually see, the female doctor, came in and she was like, okay, she said, I just spoke to the nurse at the office, which I'm grateful for because I feel like they wouldn't have believed that I was progressed unless she spoke to the nurse. And the nurse, she said, she told me what was going on. She said, here's the thing, because you're not 39 weeks, I can't legally do anything to progress your labor if you don't progress yourself. So she checked me. She said, you're about four or five centimeters dilated. She said, so I'm going to leave you for about an hour, see how you progress, and then we'll go from there. If nothing's progressing. We have to send you home. But if it is, then we'll obviously take you in. She said, but I can't give you anything. And I was like, you can't give me an epidural? And she was like, no, if you progress to that point, of course I can. So she leaves for what, 15 minutes? Like, what, how long do you think? It wasn't long before you were like, um, I think we need to get somebody. Yeah, so... I was like, are you sure? You're like, yeah. Yeah, so my pain... Because the doctor came, when she came in that first time, she was like, are you feeling these contractions? And I said, all I feel is like a period cramp. Like, it's not like in waves that you hear, like contraction-wise. I don't feel it. She said, that's okay. She said, we see it. So when she... So that progressed from there to it felt like somebody was stabbing me in my ovary but let's say like maybe like a five they asked me my pain level what did i say an eight because i remember my sister always in my head said told me make believe your pain is way worse than it is if you're if you want pain medication so remember do you remember asking the nurse and they they didn't hear you and then you went back out so i said to adam i was like you need to get the nurse like they need to check me again and he's like, you sure? And I said, yeah. So he hit the call button. And then I think I was like, oh. And he went out of the room and he's like, uh, she needs some help in here. And then they came running in. The nurse checked my cervix. That hurt me more than the contraction. Hmm. She's like, oh, you're at a seven. The doctor came back in and checked me. She's like, yeah, you're at a seven, eight. We're going to bring you into a room. They started my IV. Then they were like all that's, rushing. That's where everything got moving. Everything got fast. Yeah. They brought me into the room. They... So we went from four to seven? Fifteen minutes. Literally fifteen minutes. Yeah. And like I knew when you said go get them, that was the first time since we had talked on the phone where like I sensed that you felt like this was actually happening. <laughs> like, like, okay, it's real now. Yeah. Because I felt that it felt like literally somebody was stabbing me and I don't know where my ovary was at that point, but where my ovary normally is. So they brought us back into a room. We met the labor nurse who was an angel. I loved her. I loved everything about her. Yeah. She was fantastic. She was a doula prior to being a labor nurse and it came out perfect. So they called for my epidural. Everything is so fast in my head. He came in pretty fast though, right? He did. He, he came he in like right away. Well, wait, you should preface this by yeah, yeah. saying how many other births there were. Like our doctor delivered seven that day. That day. And it wasn't a full moon because we checked. It, she was like, this is unreal. So, when I was getting yeah. my stress test or my non-stress test at the doctor's office, the girl next to me, because they only have partitions between the rooms, she was in labor because they, they were checking her water broke. Mine didn't break. So... 
we'll get to that point but they brought in the guy for the epidural he was really cool too i mean they kind of scare you and they tell you all the things that could go wrong and i'm like i don't care i want it i need it yeah that's just legal purposes yeah still no pain i felt that one contraction that made adam go get the nurse thank god because i was at seven or eight they put in my epidural and it was fine at that point, I think the nurse and I talked you into ordering dinner because you didn't want to leave. I wasn't allowed to eat anymore. I can only have ice chips. But the nurse came in and was like, he hasn't eaten anything. And I knew, well, in my head, it was going to be a really long time before we started actually pushing. Pushing, I ran out of breath because of my first baby. She was like, if you're going to go, go now. You have a little bit. And we talked you into doing that. The doctor came in and checked, right? Now it kind of gets fuzzy for me. Well, we had some time. We had some time. They said, listen, like, this isn't going to progress. Because I'm thinking, like, uh, things are moving. Like, 15 minutes, we're going to have a baby. Yeah, yeah. And they are like, no. Yeah. That's not how this works. Yeah, because remember I said, I said to the doctor, I was I, like. I don't know. I was like, we've been saying three pushes or less. And the, do <laughs> the doctor and the nurse looked at each other and they were like, oh, honey. No. <laughs> you'll be lucky if, you'll be lucky if it's, like, in an hour or two. So, it pu that's pushing, not like in an hour. You went to go get food and you came back, but it was right there. You were gone maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes max. It wasn't long, yeah. Not long at all. You at got food for us and the nurse. Yeah, you got food for the nurse. She was like, remember, oh my God, I love you guys. Feed your nurses. Feed well. your nurses. That's when you brought in the labor baskets or the nurse's baskets. And she loved them. She yes. was already a doll before this though. No, I yeah. mean, but on top of it, they just know you appreciate them and all the hard work they do. Yep. And they deserved it. Maybe around 11, 10, 30 at night this is. We got to the, I should tell you, my doctor's appointment was at 2. We got to the hospital around 5.30. I don't know what time they took us back. I don't know what time I got my epidural, but maybe like 8 o'clock. Um, maybe 7, 8. Seven, eight. She came back like maybe 10 minutes after Adam came with the sushi. You got sushi for her. She's like, the doctor wants you to start on a little bit of Pitocin. She said, I don't think it's going to take much for you because you're already progressing so quickly, but we're going to start some Pitocin for you. So I said, okay, take three. I always watch these videos and when people after they have their baby and it takes them like 45 tries. Now I can relate. Like, keep having to take new takes because mm -hmm. the baby stopped, the battery the died, we got a phone call. It's fun. Yeah. Okay, so where were we? Pitocin. Pitocin, speeding things up. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm rambling so much, but I always loved watching these videos with all of the details because I was petrified, so I wanted to know. So, this is where I'm gonna need you because this kind of gets foggy for me, but the nurse came in. They put the Pitocin in my IV and she said, I don't think it's going to take too long. She said, but if you want to sleep, now's your chance because things are going to get, you know, start getting active in a little bit. She said, when you start feeling pressure, call me with the little call button. So this, that was like what, 1045 maybe. The reason I'm being so specific about the time is because we decided that we're going to control this. <laughs> this is seven, six. We're like, what would be a cooler birthday than seven, seven, 21? Sevens, right. we live in Vegas, lucky right. sevens. Vegas birth all day. Right? So we're <laughs> like, can we, can we slow it down now a little bit? So <laughs> around 1030, she's like, this is when you probably want a nap. And we're like, cool, we'll sleep for a few hours. It'll be past midnight. So Adam can sleep on a dime. Like you can fall asleep in seconds. And I hear him because he got himself set up on the recliner. She flipped me over to my other side because she was flipping me back and forth um, just because the epidural to get the baby's head into place. I can't flip myself. So she flipped me. I hear Adam's out and I'm like, all right, try to go to sleep. Next thing I know, I'm like pressure. The pressure was strong. And I go, are you sleeping? This was literally seconds later. It's not one of those where you fall asleep and it feels like a couple seconds, but it was actually like an hour. No, no, no. It was seconds. It was later. seconds because I didn't fall asleep. And I'm like, <clears throat> are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what, 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 what do you need? And I was like, you need to call Lisa. I feel pressure. <laughs> it, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. That's what she told me. She goes, you're going to feel like you have to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> he pressed the call button and they're like, yes. And he's like, um. She feels pressure. <laughs> 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 We're doing. <laughs> so 
So Lisa comes in and she probably didn't believe us because it was literally seconds yeah. after she left the room. So she comes in and I'm like, I feel like I have to poop. And so she goes, she's, and those were her words. So that's why I said them back to her. She's like, okay, let's check. She checks me. She's like, oh, yep. Yeah, that's because we're going to have a baby. You're 10 centimeters. So the doctor comes in. They taught me how to push. We did one, one push or two pushes. We did a couple pushes. Like almost like practice pushes. It, it was pretty quick. Yeah. And then the doctor says, yeah. I have another delivery. <laughs> I'm going to go to a different hospital, but I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm like, what? And Lisa's like, mm. they were kind of back and forth. Like, I was like, are you serious? You're going to leave us, right? Like, we just started pushing. I'm on one side of the table. I've got one leg. Lisa's on the other side of the table. She's got the other leg. And doctor the leaves. doctor leaves. She's like, you guys got this. I'm like, holy crap. Like, and none of this even phased me because Lisa was wonderful. Yeah. Like, I, she could have yeah, delivered my baby. She, she was amazing. She's like, yeah, we got this. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, like, no, I'll, I'll catch. I'm ready. <laughs> it I'm watching the clock as we're pushing, by the way. And I was like, all right, five minutes. And the con contractions were really slow. I didn't realize that you got that much of a break in between, which was good. Let me add this. Go ahead. Because from my perspective, right, us having spent so much time in the gym together, working out, it was very, it felt to me like when she was pushing, like it was part of a workout. Even how you were expressing yourself, I'm like, man, this is crazy. And Lisa on the other side, she's giving cues like any great coach would do. And immediately as, as in the moment, I'm realizing I'm like, because you're so in tune with your body, yeah, you could take each one of those cues and like make adjustments. Like she was like, no, no, drop your hips down. No, you need to push from here. And you were able to respond to that. And she's like, nope, that's it. Perfect. And I'm like, wow, this is incredible. I was like, what do they do with people that don't work out yeah. all the time or, or have that ability to like really connect, have that, that mind, the muscle connection yeah. and understand what she's trying to say. I was like, that's gotta be frustrating. It's gotta be a real challenge. And that's probably why I'm, I'm just guessing. I have no idea, but I'm saying that's why probably many births get drawn out. Yeah. People just don't know how to push like that. They don't have the experience. Yeah. Or at least um, like you said, the mind muscle connection yep. where I've been an athlete for 20, 30 years. And in fact, that's really funny you say that. Cause remember that, that on the 4th of July, when we were doing squats and I was, I mean, huge and swollen and it was 115 degrees out and I have a backpack on and I turned to Adam and I was like, well, at least you're prepared for labor and delivery. Cause you hear my noises and you see my crazy faces when I'm working out. So it's funny that you say that, but what happened was she was like, the labor nurse was like, I've never seen this problem before. You're too strong. You're pushing too well that it's working against you because I was pushing so hard. I did squats my whole entire pregnancy. She said, you're pushing so hard. It's actually the baby's head can't get past. What was it like underneath the, perineum. the, the, the pelvic bone? Okay. The perineum is pushing up. Okay. Trapping. So it was actually creating pressure as you were pushing, like blocking it. And she's like, no, no, you like, you need to relax this. Yeah. And it took some cues from her yeah. and you learned very quickly again from that, having that experience. I was like, okay, that's how I relax that. And then you change the push. Yeah. And that's where all of a sudden she's like, you want to see? I'm like, see, I was like, she's like, look at the head of hair. I'm looking, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like we had talked about, you know, with the heartburn that, oh, he's gonna come out, he's gonna have a full head of hair. I'm oh, like, he has hair. I was like, wow, that's all hair. Like, that's all I can see at this point. I'm like, oh, this kid's got a full head of hair. Now I'm, now I'm really excited. Like, it's, it was already real, but like seeing him, I'm like, man, he's gonna be here like in seconds. I'm glad you said that because for me, going through it, it felt surreal. Like, it, felt like an out of body experience. I have no idea how else to describe it, but it didn't, it was all just happening so fast in a blur. And I don't know if it was like the drugs in the epidural that were kind of like getting a, a blur, but so now the doctor comes back. Just the nick of time, right? Just like, the nick of time. Oh, we're having a baby. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Let's go. Let's finish yeah. this. 
she was uh, she should coach a professional football yeah. team yeah. the best like literally just like a cheerleader every push that's the one that's the one go 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 so we did a few pushes with her and then the next thing i remember was her telling me okay and she was very calm but she said okay she said baby needs to come out on the next push otherwise and i see her and lisa looking at the heart rate monitor now the baby's heart rate she said his heart rate's dropping a little bit it's okay it went back up he's okay but if he doesn't come out on the next push now in my head i thought she's gonna tell me you're gonna have to go in for a c-section and i was like you know who wants that after pushing for at this point an hour a little over an hour between an hour and an hour and a half i can't remember exactly but she was so cute because she said sometimes i have to threaten the babies that they have to you know we need them to work with us and come out she was telling me i need you to get him out because of his heart rate she said otherwise if it's okay with you i'm gonna have to use the vacuum and i was like just whatever you need to do to keep the baby safe mm -hmm. so she said okay but you're gonna you just next push it's gonna be a good one okay i'm gonna count it down next contraction and then i remember like this is all i remember i pushed with all my might but not all my might because i'm pushing too well originally i'm pushing too hard all i felt was from the top of my abs to the bottom of my abs just like it was like the hardest ab workout of my life but in a good way next thing i remember was her telling me do you want to grab your baby and i reached like i reached she went to go get him to me and he was so slimy i couldn't get my hands on him and then i got him i don't even know where you were it's all literally a blur and i remember looking at him and he's not crying yet and i'm like whose baby is this <laughs> <laughs> i was so confused first of all that he came out already second of all that he doesn't look like, in my opinion at that point, he didn't look like either one of us. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody take him. I don't want him right now. This is like a lot. I don't know what to do with him. It was so crazy in that moment. And then, where were you? I don't even know where you were. I was were. right next to you. You were right next to me? Yeah. Did, did you say like, what happened? <laughs> I think at this point, like, just, I was just, it, we hadn't eaten since, yeah. or I hadn't eaten since like. It was stimulus overload. Yeah. Like it was just so much. Honestly, that last push that you needed, like, that was one. He was right there. Like, I'm watching all of you this. You watched him come out? Oh, I literally oh, watched did? him come out. Yeah. And I saw he was right there, and he had been on the edge a couple times, and you gave that extra push. And as soon as he cleared, like, that's what we were waiting for. When he came out, I saw the cord. I'm glad you said that. The cord was forgot. wrapped, and I was like... And she was me. She's like, no, no. She looked at my face. She's like, I got this. I'm, I'm like, oh, like, what do I? Yeah, what do I do? And she immediately stepped in, un unraveled the cord. You know what I mean? And she's like, everything's good. Everything's great. He's fine. He's good. And then he started crying. And I'm like, ah. Uh. I remember feeling the ah when he cried too, because I'm holding him for a few seconds before he cried. I'm waiting for him to cry. I'm so confused. Whose baby is this? <laughs> Who does? He doesn't look like and they, us. And they left the cord. Yeah, okay, keep going, because I don't remember any of this. And so they left the cord for a few minutes, which is what we wanted. This hospital does delayed cord clamping and delayed bathing, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So they left the cord, and then they said, okay, we're going to do the cord. They said, are you ready? You want to cut it? I was like, oh, absolutely. I'm and kinda... where was I? Just wild land? Yeah, you were kind of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were just... It was stimulus overload at that point. You were like... Wow. What like, just happened? It was all yeah. so fast. And it was like in, in the whole scheme of things, like it, it did happen fast because we had the time with just myself and Lisa there, the three of us, Yeah. which was very cool that we got that yeah. experience. The whole front end of, of the pushing, the delayed contractions. But then at the end, like it just really happened quickly. Yeah. And I remember, oh, on that last push, they're like, we're ready to have a baby. And I remember, people have told me this forever, and I never believed that I'd be this person because I'm so shy and so, like, modest with my body that, like, I think 10 people rushed in the room. <laughs> I'm there with my legs and stirrups, like, just ready to go. She tells me, you got to get him out on the last push. That didn't even phase me. And they always told me that that would happen, but I was like, yeah, right. Like, aren't you embarrassed? You're not. Like, you have no other anything in your mind except like I gotta get this baby out and not because I was in pain I was in no pain the whole time the only thing that 
I felt and I remember like grabbing her hand and it was somewhere between a lot of pressure and a little pain and I don't know how because I had an epidural but Lisa was doing perineal massage the whole entire time that between pushes and she's like I know it's not comfortable but I have to help you so you don't tear and I didn't I got like one teeny tiny little one stitch one stitch one tiny little first degree tear internal which is nothing especially for a first baby and an athlete so that's really all I remember that was it that was it no I mean that really was that was all of it the date yeah it was um so it was, we did make it to after midnight and I remember just like watching the clock every minute. It was 12.44 a.m. on July 7th. He, and then they took him to weigh him and I saw you go over there and he weighed? Seven pounds, five ounces, 20 inches, 20 and a half inches long. Do you remember his head circumference? I don't, but remember his head, his head was a little long and I remember going, is looking it, at it funny. Is it going to stay like that? Yeah. Like, he just had the cold He's head. like, no, no. He was like, you know, everybody there was very gracious. They're like, no, that's just because he was in that canal for a minute. And in order for him to get out, like, his head just stretched a little bit. Could you imagine for babies that are like five hours? And a little hour? swollen. Or like 48 hours? Oh, hour my labors? goodness. Because he was only in there for a few yeah, hours. I was worried initially, but, you know... Yeah. I didn't even notice it. I'm like, it was a blur. It was all a blur. I kind of wish I remember more, but I kind of don't. You were amazing. I remember the good stuff. You were amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Then they left us in there for about two hours. Not left us in there, but they told us we had to stay there for two hours in recovery just to check, you know, my bleeding and my Vitals. vitals and yep. the baby's vitals and all that stuff. And he stayed with us the whole time. And then a couple of people from nursery came in to do stuff with him. And eventually they took us up to our room and we got the best room in the house. It was so cool. It was like this gorgeous, enormous room, but it was a new wing of the hospital and it was on the far side. So literally we had a view. Now at this point it's what, three in the morning? Yeah, it's, it's between three yeah. and four in the morning. So it's still dark out. And we had a view at this huge hospital window of the whole entire Las Vegas Strip, yeah, which was... to me was just like such a metaphor of our life and our miracle baby and our 7721. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So that's our easy birth story. I mean, it was, I'm kind of afraid. This is so, I shouldn't even ever say this, say but it. I admit it, say but I'm afraid to do it again because it was that easy. We'll save that for another video. We will. All right, that's it. All right, love you guys. Love you guys.